Mr Crispin here once again and today we're going to continue work on the cylinder covers. Uh, you will see above my head that uh, I now have a 3 axis digital readout on the uh, bridge port and that is uh, thanks to a very kind viewer. So uh, let's make a start. So I've got two jobs to do here. One is to mill all around this uh, profile that you can see in blue and the other is to put a PCD in uh, for where the screws hold these onto the cylinder blocks. So I'm going to make a little fixture and I found this uh, old piece of uh, aluminium that's been cut off from somewhere and uh, I'm going to put it in the four jaw, face it off and bore a recess that matches the back so that'll fit on there. I'm also going to drill and tap an M6 hole and an M6 cap head will pass through the bore and that will allow me to clamp it on. So that's the little fixture I'm going to make and uh, that will allow me to get to all the uh, features I need to get to. Uh, handily uh, the spindle nose on my lathe matches the spindle nose on my dividing head. So after I've turned this I can then uh, mount it on the dividing head vertically and uh, I'll check it with a DTI but it should be pretty well aligned. I can tweak it if it isn't. And that's the fixture done. Okay, so you'll see here I have the uh, four jaw chuck in the horizontal position and it is mounted on the uh, dividing head, uh, sitting in the upright position. Uh, I took the chuck off the lathe, put it on the dividing head and then checked it in various uh, ways with an indicator and uh, I found that it was very flat but it was um, off centre by about uh, two and a half thou, so I've adjusted it with the jaws to bring it uh, concentric. And that is going to fit in right there. Next up I've made a little uh, spacer that just fits in there and the cap screw goes down and I can lock that up with an allen key. So we currently have a solid boss as you can see. First up I'm going to set the dividing head to zero degrees and machine on a flat. So we go from the solid boss to a flat and I'm going to do this at the front of the table where I can see it. That flat then gives me something to time the component with and by time I mean set the rotation um, currently that could be anywhere from the zero position I am then going to rotate 74 and a bit degrees which takes me to this view so there's what we've just cut I'm going to rotate 
and then cut down this side. I am then going to rotate 210 degrees roughly and that puts me in line for this side. So we then have three new sections milled on and this is still as turned. The final process will be to mill the radius by winding the dividing head round against the cutter. So when we get to this position I will uh, talk a bit about how I'm going to avoid dwell marks in these changes of direction uh, and once I've machined a whole component I'll show you the maths of how I've worked all these positions out. So as ever the first thing uh, to do is to find the datum and uh, in this case I'm going to use the centre of the component so I've got a um, clock here and first of all I'm going to find it by I and then bring the clock in okay and the first thing I like to do is just run it round and check that the needle is within its range of travel for the whole way round and that is to say that it's not going too far plus or too far minus and that's fine the needles moving nicely so now considering up and down and side to side I can zero the component zero at the back split the difference Not bad. And then I know on the side it should go to zero. This is a 10 micron clock by the way, so each division's uh, 10 microns, less than half a sam. So I'll take a moment to get that uh, absolutely right, but that's the uh, basic practice. Okay, so uh, you could have clocked the actual fixture before installing the component, but uh, because this was a good fit in the fixture, I was quite happy to clock the component. Uh, it's probably more repeatable uh, to clock the fixture if you had lots of these to do. Anyway, so to begin machining, I am going to bring this round until it's at zero. Okay, make sure I'm winding in the same direction every time. And I'm now going to machine this front face to three quarters of an inch from the centre. I've touched on to this flat surface and I'm just going to uh, tickle it to enable me to take a measurement and adjust later on. Okay, now I didn't show it uh, during the footage but I actually did a check before I reached final size and let me just show you how I'm checking this. As I said, the centre of the bore is my datum and uh, there's nothing really I can do to measure to the centre of the bore, not with this cap head in. Uh, but what I can measure to is the OD. I know the relationship between the OD and the centre and I can measure the OD so I can do some quick maths. And to do this, I've basically measured the OD, I have halved it to give me the radius, and then I've subtracted the thickness I want, uh, which is three quarters of an inch in this case, from the radius. That leaves me what the gap from here to here should be. I can then prepare a slip gauge stack that should take me 
from the face to the OD. I can then hold my slip gauge stack against the face and I can wind the clock up. And that's saying I'm a thou and a half plus, so I could take another little cut if I wanted to. So here's the maths which I'll go through later, but I've just done this face. And now to rotate to get to this face, I need to do um, 8 turns and 12 holes. Now for the fun part, I'm going to bring the cutter back so it's on zero, speaking in the x-axis. So we should now be directly in line uh, along the y-axis and I'm going to feed in towards the centre until the radius is complete. Okay, so there's one cut left to go on the radius, and I thought I'd just speak quickly about how I like to prevent dwell marks and end up with a nice um, profile. First of all, there's two methods I like to use. Uh, the preferable one is to go around almost in one smooth motion. So, to demonstrate in fresh air, I would start with the dividing head round like this. I would feed along till I got to the centre of rotation. I would then rotate the dividing head all the way round to bring the next flat into line. And once I got there I would then continue to feed off and that would give me a continuous uh, profile uh, which would look nice. Now the downside to that method is you've got to be very quick when you change from feeding with the hand wheel to engaging the dividing head hand wheel, uh, otherwise you get a big dwell mark or chatter mark where the cutter has paused. Uh, and if I was on a nice big solid machine, um, you can eliminate that problem by taking a few light cuts as you uh, lead up to the final cut. This machine, however, has only got a number two Morse taper spindle and uh, I've got an ER collet, so I've got a long tool stick out and I do suffer with chatter if I slow the feed rate down anymore. So what I've done in this case is I've actually taken both the flats to the final dimension already which is half an inch from the bore along uh, a tangent. So all I will have to do at this moment in time is bring that back so the face is in line, feed back in to half an inch or just so I start to touch that face then wind the dividing head round and when I get to this side uh, and the face comes in line 
wind the dividing head away and that will leave me a nice radius. I will also demonstrate the nicer method whereby I do it in one continuous motion uh, with a chamfering tool after I've taken this last cut. So let's finish off and then I'll show you some of the maths. Well, I've just chamfered this component and then realised the camera wasn't switched on, so uh, let me just do a quick dummy run to show you the method. First of all, I brought this back to zero, and then cut across the front. Okay, so that was chamfering the front of the component. Then, here's how I did the rest. I brought this round to my next position. came up to the edge then you feed along until you get to the center of rotation which is just here then swap to the dividing head as quickly as you can and as smoothly as you can and chamfer the radius all the way around until you come to the next position okay and then again you smoothly transfer and wind down off the component and so uh, that was my method and that's how I've just chamfered them and uh, sorry I missed that off the footage so uh, maths wise, what do we need to know? Well, I'm going to start uh, on this face and once I've machined that, I'm going to rotate to machine this face. So I need to know the angle to do that. I then need to know how to get from this face to this face. So that's basically it, two angles. But I have very limited information to work with, so I'm going to have to do some extra maths to get me enough information to uh, work the rest out. Now uh, I only get two dimensions off the drawing, one is from the datum to this face is um, three quarters of an inch and the other is from this corner to this corner is five eighths of an inch and uh, this is all symmetrical so we can assume the centre line goes right through the middle. Now that's all I get and because uh, this is normally a casting I've had to just decide to make this from here to here one inch so that gives us a half inch radius and that actually now gives us everything we need to uh, work out what to do first up I need to draw some construction lines so I've drawn in on red two extensions of these uh, faces and what that does is it highlights the uh, point at which the straight line runs into the radius and what we know is if we draw a straight line from the center of the datum out to the intersection point uh, we effectively have the tangent and we have a 90 degree angle up here as shown by these two lines so we can put some dimensions down there these are 0.5 of an inch and what we want next is the angle that runs all around here to get that I'm going to have to find out what the angle is on this side we know that there's 360 degrees in a circle, so if I can find out how many degrees go around this side, I can subtract that from 360 and it'll tell me what's left. So, up here I need more construction lines. This line is just straight down the middle, and we know that in length that is 0.75. Oh, uh, three quarters of an inch. So that gives us that. We need to find some right angle triangles now to allow us to uh, do the rest and uh, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw another construction line from this corner to the centre. So there you see that and uh, why do that? Well that divides that uh, strange shape into two right angle triangles. We've got a right angle triangle here and a right angle triangle here. 
So considering this triangle first, we know that that is 750, three quarters of an inch up there. And we know that that is going to be half of the 5 eighths overall. So we've got these two. Pythagoras can now be used, and I've already done it. It comes out at 8, 12, 5. Also, we've now got two lengths on this triangle. So I can again use Pythagoras to find the length from the tangent to the corner. Ignore that uh, extra zero. So if you do Sokotoa on this now, we can put the missing angles in. Across here, 52.02. Across here, 22.62. And obviously these are going to be a mirror image. Add them up and minus it from 360. We get 210.72. So that gives me the angle uh, that I'm going to have to rotate to go from one side to the other. At the top end we can do something similar. I get 67.38. And I get 37.95. Okay, now if we think about what the angle we actually need is, we're going to start here, milling along here, and turn until that is there. So it's not quite 90 degrees if we look at where we've gone. So what I'm going to do is basically draw a straight line across here and find the missing angle. We know there's 180 degrees in a straight line. We're going to minus this number and this number from 180, and that leaves us 74.64. So we now have the angle there and the angle here, and uh, that is enough information to uh, proceed. So that's the maths. Some uh, credit goes to my brother for helping me work that out. And the proof in all this is how well the angles have matched up with the radius intersection. So let's go and have a look at the finished components. Well there we have the uh, milling finished and I'll give you a close up of one. I'm pleased with how they've come out. That's more or less how they sit on the uh, cylinder block. So um, I look forward to finishing them off. Part 3 will be the uh, next and final video in this little series where I'll sort the front covers out and um, do a PCD of holes uh, around here and drill and tap the cylinder blocks. Um, until then, I hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video.